Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineer Dangler. Hold up. Okay, I can't see without these things. So I'm back in the shop. I'm going to do another quick uh, question and answer. And this is where I'm going to try to make a short video and answer some questions a little more in depth than I can uh, uh, in just a, a text reply on Facebook or on the YouTube channel. So I'm going to grab a couple of the topics that you guys have uh, offered up and uh, expound upon those as best I can. So stick around. Okay, so today I'm going to do two topics. There's two things that kind of kept reoccurring in a lot of the comments that I saw. One is not really a comment, but a suggestion or a request. And that was for me to stick to English units and not kind of stray off into the crazy world of metric units. Uh, and you know what? I can totally get it, right? I totally feel what you're talking about. I grew up in the States. I know what it's like. I know if somebody comes up to me and says, hey man, I got a 5.2 liter V8 in my car, I would be like, is that a 307? What is that? I, I, I need cubic inches. I'm much more comfortable with the American units in length and area and even volume when it doesn't have to do with water volume. Let me show you the differences in the equations really quickly and you'll see why I kind of stray off on occasion. Okay, so here's what the differences look like. In the imperial system, uh, of course, that's the U.S. system, uh, and we're talking about water now. We're talking about the weight of water, the volumetrics of water. Okay, in the imperial system, the U.S. system, uh, one fluid ounce, not to be confused with weight ounce, one fluid ounce equals 1.734 cubic inches. And that equals 28 0.415 grams. So you can see that's a little bit uh, heavy on the decimals. So if you slide on down to the metric system, one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter, which equals one gram. So you can see this is the simplest equation uh, that you can possibly have. One equals one equals one. You can do all the math in your head, practically speaking, and you don't have to run the risk of making a bunch of mistakes uh, not knowing which conversion factor to use. When you watch me do this stuff, you, I'm going to stick to the metric system when it comes to water weight and water volume. It's just simpler and more direct. And for all those times where I've sort of mixed units, the uh, American system with the metric system, I apologize. That's pretty bad form. Uh, I try to mix in a little bit of metric for uh, the rest of the world who uses metric so they can sort of see the sizes of the lures that I'm building. So the second issue that was brought up it was actually a few questions and a few people uh, requesting some help with this particular problem. If you've been making lures and you've been making lures at a resin, you've had this problem. And that is that when you go to clear coat, suddenly you've got a bunch of disgusting uh, fish eyes, whether it's those ripply effects that you end up with or actual uh, orange peel. Most of those uh, finishing flaws are caused by a layer of some fouling layer that's on your uh, resin lure. I've tested, I believe, nine different two-part epoxies for casting lures, and they have all had about the same amount of residual oils or whatever it is, and I've had to come up with ways to, to deal with that. Now, just as a heads up, the best one I've found is the Alumalite. Alumalite seems to off-gas the quickest, come to full set uh, more, more rapidly, and then just washing it usually does the trick, but not always. And I still have had lures uh, just absolutely ruined at the point of clear coating. So what's going on with the resin is that it is taking a long time to set up, and as it sets up, it off-gasses. And uh, those volatiles tend to leave a, uh, some kind of oily finish. And sometimes it's enough that you can actually feel it with your fingers. So the idea is to get it fully set up and get it cleaned off. If you're like me and you want to make it go a little quicker and you don't want to wait the 10 days and then wash it, uh, this is what I do. I take my lure straight from the mold. I give it a, a quick sanding to get rid of the flashing and anything really heavy. I'll cut off the flue plug and then I'll bring it directly to 
my little uh, makeshift old toaster oven. Now what I've done with this toaster oven is I've taken the original rack and I've cut the ends off and turned them up so I can use it as a hanger. The key is to heat it up to about 150 to 170. Don't go over 170 degrees. The resin can take pretty high temperatures. It will tend to get a little bit soft and it might change shape on you. After they have baked for two hours, I'll put them in a bowl with warm water and a little bit of dishwashing soap, uh, not too strong a soap. And I'll, I'll wash them off. You'll notice the little oil comes off of them. I'll rinse them really well and then I'll stick them back in here for about 30 minutes at the same temperature and that's just to dry them off and get them hot again. So I want to get them hot through and through, all, all the way through the body. What I'll do at that point is I'll set this area up with some paper towels to catch the drippings because I'm going to take them out of here and I'll wear gloves uh, uh, first so I don't feel the heat and the other is so I don't foul the surface anymore and I'll take these out and 155 degrees this isn't enough to burn you. Rubber gloves will protect you just fine. And then I'll dip my lure into my sealing uh, liquid and what I use is this uh, polyacrylic. It's uh, water based. It's made by Minwax. And I'll dip it just once. But all, what you have to do is submerge it in this liquid and hold it under until you're pretty certain that the lure has cooled off. What that does is it allows that fluid to really get into the pores because as the lure cools, the air inside those little pores cool too and they contract and it draws that fluid in. And so now you have a really deeply sealed lure body and you can just hang this up, let it drip dry and you're ready to paint. So thank you for watching. I hope this stuff is helpful. If you find it interesting and helpful, certainly subscribe. It'll help me out as we move forward and try to grow the community and grow the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.